This is a story about the botanist. More accurately, this is a beautifully crafted review of the botanist Isla Dry Gin, written by Chip Dykstra. Whether or not you already knew that the Scots not only produce some of the finest whiskies in the world, but also make delectable gins, this story is for you. And if you are one who appreciates the great variety and complexity of a high-quality gin, this story is definitely for you. We will first hear the brief story of Chip's introduction to the botanist. Then we will all be swept up in a journey through the tasting experience itself, from bottle to burn. The botanist is the creation of Brookladi master distiller Jim McEwen, who in 2010 oversaw the installation at Brookladi of the last authentic Lomond still, which had been recovered during the demolition of the Inverleven distillery in Dumbarton. Following modifications by McEwen, he began to produce his Isla Dry Gin in 2011. The botanist is produced upon that Lomond still in a distillation process which lasts 17 hours. During the final distillation, the core botanicals are placed into the pot of the still in a particular order after the distillate has been raised to a hand-hot temperature. These core botanicals, I believe there are nine in all, are steeped in the hot distillate for 12 hours before distillation begins. Interestingly, in addition to the core botanicals, the gin also uses 22 unique Isla botanicals which have been gathered by hand from the hills and valleys which surround the distillery. These Isla botanicals are placed in loosely woven muslin sacks and then into a casket within the line arm of the Lomond still, where the vapors of the distillation will run through them near the end of the distillation process, bringing a unique Isla character to the botanist gin. I had the opportunity to meet and talk to Jim McEwen when he came to Edmonton in 2013 to host an exclusive Brookladi tasting at our city's historic Chateau Louis Hotel. Although the focus of the tasting seminar was the new range of Brookladi single malt whiskies, Jim did include the botanist in the flight of spirits. In fact, he spent quite a bit of time describing to us how the distillery had come to the decision to produce this gin and his own personal journey of discovery which he underwent while he went through the process of researching and producing his first Isla Dry Gin. Jim McEwen even admitted to trading some of his prized single malt scotch with one of the industry's iconic retired gin producers in return for some of his gin secrets. At the conclusion of the tasting, I was invited to talk to Jim, and he offered to pour me another glass of my favorite spirit from the tasting. Although I had tasted a range of single malts which included spirits 12 to 20 years old, Mr. McEwen did not seem at all surprised when I asked for a second glass of the botanist, straight up with no ice. It was, in my opinion, the star of the afternoon. It is now seven years after my initial review for the botanist was published and Jim McEwen is no longer with the distillery, having retired in July of 2015. Since I recently received another sample bottle, I have decided to taste the spirit again and revisit my original review to see if the high quality I recognized in 2013 has been maintained. So now, if you happen to have a bottle of the botanist on your shelves, pour yourself a glass. If you do not have the botanist available, pour a wee dram of whatever brings you warmth and joy Settle into a comfortable chair, take off your glasses, and close your eyes. Take a full, deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Relax and allow yourself to be transported. The Botanist Isla Dry Gin In the bottle, 4.5 out of 5. The botanist arrives in a medium-tall cylinder bottle. The label is designed to be minimalist in nature, which I am sure is meant to reinforce the impression that this gin is handcrafted rather than produced from an industrial process. The producers have purposefully highlighted the number 22 in red, drawing attention to the 22 Isla botanicals used in the gin's construction. 
As well, all of these Isla Botanicals are embossed upon the glass cylinder of the bottle under the label. Eleven in the front, and eleven upon the back. The embossed lettering actually serves a utilitarian purpose, as they give texture to the outside of the bottle, making it easy to grip and hold when you are pouring out a small shot of the spirit. Crowning the presentation is a solid synthetic cork which gives the bottle that satisfying pop when you open it. In the glass, 9.5 out of 10. The botanist is a clear gin which, when tilted and twirled, leaves a thin sheen of liquid on the inside of the glass, the crest of which drops small, slender legs back into the gin. The aroma from the glass represents a traditional gin profile, with firm, piney juniper scents leading out in front of soft citrus and light floral impressions. Although the juniper is firm, as the glass rests, the breezes above the glass fill with the subtle nuances of the other botanicals. Ginger-like spices tickle the nose along with hints of spicy cinnamon and cardamom. A light impression of mojito mint weaves its way into the breezes, along with lightly bitter undertones of the broken tops of Russian blue thistle and the lightly sweet herbaceous tones of sweet clover blossoms. There are hints of lemon and citrus peel and a lovely tapestry of spring flowers all entwined around the firm juniper. The gin seems all at once robust and assertive, yet full of delicate nuance. In the mouth, 55 out of 60. The firm, piney bitterness of juniper runs through the spirit, which dries the mouth and puckers the palate as you sip. The mouth is heated with ginger-like spices and the herbaceous heat of coriander and cardamom. Laying within the bitter juniper and the herbaceous heat is a mild yet zesty citrus, which brings light flavors of lemon and orange peel across the palate as well. A mild influence of licorice and mint meander into the fray, along with an underlying earthiness, speaking to the presence of angelica root somewhere in the mix of main botanicals. Delicate floral flavors surface, giving the gin more than a hint of springtime. And yet there is some autumn in the glass as well, as I can taste a hint of fresh garden celery and a touch of dry fall grass. Although the gin brings many aspects to the palate, piney juniper tainted with the light, spicy heat of coriander, cardamom, and citrus remains at the backbone of the spirit. We taste the influence of the other botanicals only as accents upon this core flavor. At its heart, the botanist remains a traditional dry gin. It is a fact, however, that this traditional gin is very easy to enjoy as a sipping spirit. Of course, for most of us, gin is not really meant to be sipped. The next part of my review process was to construct a few cocktails beginning with a classic gin and tonic. I like to make my gin and tonics rather strong with an almost one-to-one -one ratio of gin to tonic, and this format really suits the botanist gin. As the firm juniper plays with the tonic, the light nuances of the other botanicals playfully dance in the glass, making the mixed drink a real treat to sip on a warm afternoon. I followed this up with a lime gimlet, and then I made a dry gin martini. Each cocktail was a delight, although I must admit I found sipping the botanist straight delightful as well. In the throat, 14 out of 15. I think that part of the genius behind my adoration of the botanist gin is the lovely dry finish, which begins with a washing of the throat with lightly bitter juniper and earthy angelica, and ends with a building up of lightly spicy coriander and cardamom. Each time I take a sip, the combination of the dry bitterness followed by the light spiciness seems to require that I repeat the experience just one more time. 
After a few sips, I begin to notice that my palate is awash with light floral flavors, mild mint, and licorice impressions. The spirit is a delight which begins with the nosing and follows all the way through to the finish. The Afterburn, 9.5 out of 10. I was curious as to whether, seven years removed from that original tasting event hosted by Jim McEwen, I would find the Isla Dry Gin as wonderfully beguiling as I had almost a decade earlier. Now that I have had a chance to taste the spirit in isolation in my tasting room, and in a few cocktails, I am happy to report that my first impression has been verified. The Botanist is an outstanding gin which pleases both as a sipping spirit and as a cocktail spirit. Written by Chip Dykstra, also known as Arctic Wolf, for the Rum Howler blog, a website for spirited reviews. Original Review 2013, refreshed in March of 2020.